Am I the a-hole for telling my stepkids I'm not their mom? My husband, 40 male, and I, 36 female, have been together for 8 years now, and our marriage have been rocky. When I met him, he had twins, boy and girl. I love them like they're my children, since it's hard for me to have kids that are mine. My husband and I tried for a baby last year, and I became pregnant but had a miscarriage. I think I'm just not meant to be a new mommy. The kids are 16. The husband's kids haven't seen their mom in years because she left them for a guy in New York, which is so sad, because they didn't get to have a relationship with her. The twins call me mom at everything, and we do everything like a little family I always wanted. When I was younger, I always used to tell myself not to date a single father because they might be messing with the mother of their kids, but I took the leap of faith. The other day, my son and daughter wanted to go to the mall with their friends, which was fine because they go to the mall a lot with them. The argument started because of what she was wearing. She wore a very short skirt with a crop top and a jeans jacket. I immediately told her no and to change her clothes because I didn't feel comfortable with her going outside like that. I don't even know where she got the skirt from because anything she gets from the mall she gives me a haul. Her brother didn't even care what she was wearing and just rolled his eyes at me. She was mad and upset. At the top of the stairs, she screamed and told me I wasn't her mom, so I should stop acting like it. Her brother laughed, and that made me feel even worse, so I asked him why it was so funny to him. He said that it's true, that I'm not their mom, so I need to stop acting like I can tell them what to do. This felt like a slap in the face because I basically raised her, and this is what I get? The past months they've been saying horrible things to me. My daughter even told me it was my fault I lost the baby, and she's happy I did. But the next day, I toughen up. I acted like nothing happened that day. I would usually wake them up for school and make them breakfast. But this time, I didn't. I made myself breakfast. Because like they said, I'm not their mom. My son had a basketball game that day and I would be the mom to bring snacks for the team. But I wasn't going. My daughter had a cheer competition two days after, but I wasn't going. I know you all might call me petty for this and I would disagree with you. I've been getting up and ignored everyone. I could feel them staring at me every time. Last night, my daughter came up to me and asked me why I didn't show up to her competition, and I told her I wasn't her mom, so why would I? I can already see the YTAs, and I raised my husband's kids and stuff. I told my husband what they said, but he brushed me off. I don't think our marriage is working out, and I've been thinking about a divorce. I feel unappreciated in the place I call home. When I slave in the kitchen to make them food, they order out instead, so I'm the only one eating the food. Was that too harsh? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. They knew what they said, but are now facing the consequences of their mouths. Not the a-hole. Being a step-parent is a thankless job. Luckily, some don't have to live through this, but most of us do. Amen to this. The only time one of my stepdaughters calls or texts me is when she needs me to do something for her. Like do her taxes, use my house to host a baby shower for someone I don't know for 16-plus guests, rewrite her resume. You get it. Oh, and she'll be 28 next month. When I tell her no, I'm a witch. I think this one is not the a-hole. I don't know if they're trying to see your limits so they can see if you're going to leave them like their bio mom, or they just want to be preferred by their bio mom and taking their anger out on you. But I know this is a call for therapy. You're already hurt, and someone can get hurt even more if you don't get help. Your husband must care about this nonsense, and that's why he's the real a-hole in this story. I wouldn't say he's even worse than the kids, because as an adult and parent he needs to do something and he just sits there and watching the crap show. What you do is petty, but you also show them you care and you're hurt actually. And if they question you again, you can always say you respect their boundaries. So even if you saw them as your own, you will not step on their boundaries and do mommy duties. Honestly, be petty so they can learn not to take granted people who loves them. I think it's the typical teenage a-hole behavior. They would do it in some form with their bio mom if she were there. She's not, so they go after the available parent and hit where it hurts without thinking about the consequences. I hope they will understand what they are doing and apologize. They told her it's her fault she lost her baby and they're glad she did. Not the a-hole. Also, you are only 36. I would not waste any more of my time with him if I were you. Take a year to yourself and try to see if it is possible to have your own family. Harsh to the twins, but they made it clear you are not their mom, and your husband is using you for a ready-made mom, while he gives no care to the fact that you don't have a secure place in his family. And then have kids if you want. My wife was 36 when I met her and we're having our second. Sometimes things don't work out for a long time, then they do. Next story. Am I the a-hole for saying my 11-year-old stepdaughter isn't allowed around my infant again until she gets therapy? 
The situation is harder than a normal situation due to us having full custody of my stepdaughter and her only seeing her bio mom once every four to six months. However, I have told my husband I'm going to stay elsewhere until he checks his daughter into therapy. For a bit of context, I have been involved in her life since she was five and we have had full custody of her for four years. I gave birth five months ago and there's been things happening that I'm not okay with and never will be okay with. These things were not present prior to the baby arriving, so I know it's due to the baby. Such as she's in complete competition with the baby, based on the looks alone. Like she will be holding the baby and say, I'm so much prettier than you. You will never be prettier than me. You're just jealous that I'm the gorgeous one, etc, etc, all in a baby voice. When my daughter smiles at her, she looks at me and her dad and says, See, even she agrees with me. She knows she will never be as gorgeous as I am. We have asked her why she feels like she's in competition with a baby, and not for the normal things like attention, but physical looks instead. And she always says things like, I'm not in competition with her, there's no competition, I'm just gorgeous and need to make sure she knows. The other thing is that I breastfeed, and nearly every time she holds the baby, she comments on my daughter trying to nurse off her. Like if my daughter grabs her shirt, she's immediately saying things like, she's trying to take my shirt off and get to my and makes comments to the baby saying, You're being inappropriate. Do not try to take my clothes off. You're weird. Those are my boobs. And she's 100% serious. Like she's really trying to accuse an infant of trying to strip her. I've talked to her about it. I've talked to my husband about it. I've talked to both of them at the same time. I've blatantly said that her attitude surrounding the baby makes me uncomfortable and untrusting. But apparently I'm blowing this out of proportion because it's not even a big deal. It is though, to me anyways, because it's every time she's near the baby. But today I had gone out to the car real quick, and when I came back in, my husband told me that his daughter had a baby in her room. I go in and see my stepdaughter laying with a baby in a nursing position with her back turned to me. I walk in and ask what is going on, and she immediately acts disgusted and says, she's trying to take my shirt off again, and moves away from the baby and physically pulls her shirt down, big t-shirt that she had pulled up. I grabbed my baby and started packing, Husband comes in and asks where we are going. I tell him me and the baby are going to stay elsewhere until he gets his daughter into therapy because of what I just witnessed and the fact that I don't trust her around my infant anymore. I told him I had tried talking to him and her both several times and I'm done talking. He gets her help or I'm not coming back home. He says I'm blowing this out of proportion and he is sure that it wasn't what it looked like and that I'm being ignorant for being willing to take the baby away from him and his daughter during crucial bonding months. I told him if he had taken me seriously to begin with, then it wouldn't have come to this. He can visit. She cannot until she's in therapy and working through her obvious issues. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Dad needs to understand between her being a tween in puberty and becoming more aware of her body and hormones and being in a home with a breastfeeding infant for the first time. And all of that, she's going to have issues that talking to a professional about would be good. She is hyperfixated on appearance and breastfeeding, and puberty is a beast. But adding hyperfixation in? She needs a professional, preferably a woman. Not the a-hole. I agree with all points. This poor child needs therapy before she causes some serious issues. I will say it is common and normal. I just want to stress that. For girls that have been fed slash are seeing it to nurse their baby dolls, but never try to do it with an actual baby. Mind you, I've only ever seen this in children younger than 10, more in the age range. I'm a little worried about what her life was like at her mom's. It sounds like the mom has no custody for a reason, and I'm a little worried that the mother did something in front of her that would make her think this is normal. OP should get her to a therapist ASAP to see what is going on, because this is not normal. If she has no mental issues, then there's probably something that occurred near or to her at her mom's. Do you love her? Would you be willing to spend time with her one-on-one? -on -one? This could also be a reaction to you giving birth and not spending enough time with her. Pediatric nurse here. OP, under no circumstances and in no way are you wrong or overreacting. Your infant is entirely dependent upon you for its safety, since your husband made it very clear that he either doesn't care or is absolutely in denial that there is a threat. Also, statistically, the most dangerous person to any given child is typically a family member, not a stranger, a member of their own family. So everyone saying your stepdaughter is your daughter too is ignoring the fact that one child has become a potential danger to the other. The fact that they are family and young does not give them the right to do something you know is wrong to another child. Do not ignore your instincts, they are telling you the right thing. Also, speaking from personal experience, your child will never forgive you if you force them to be in the same place with somebody that is dangerous. 
That is betrayal that lives with them forever. You are supposed to protect your daughter. Failing that is not something that they will ever forget. Your stepdaughter does not need protection. She needs help. No, it is not your duty to protect her too, because she is not the one possibly in danger here. Yep, worked in a long-term lock-in psych slash behavior unit for boys ages 7 to 17, and by far the most common source of physical slash sexual abuse is a family member, and many times it's an underage sibling. Kids are sociopaths by default, isn't they joke? The brain is still developing. It needs healthy boundaries and guidance. She has some issues, and it comes off like she has been abused in some way herself, or has some weird fixations that somebody her age should not have. Not the a Good on you to protect yourself and your baby. I'm surprised this is the only reply mentioning the stepdaughter possibly having been abused. OP, her behavior has so many abuse flags waving. Dad needs to get her in therapy to address anything that might have happened to her and her behavior towards the baby. I've considered this as well, but admittedly, I don't know when that could have ever happened. Not saying it didn't happen, of course. Her mom doesn't have any boyfriends. She's a traveling nurse, which is why she barely sees her daughter. So when she does visit there, it's only them. When she stays at her grandmother's, there is no one around outside of her grandmother and I don't think they would be inappropriate. They're both extremely concerned with her behavior, at the very least. The only other people she is around is me, the baby, and her dad. She doesn't do sleepovers. Her friends are allowed here, but we do not allow sleepovers because she is, by her definition slash admission, lesbian. She's been dating Madison for two years. When they are broken up, she's always dating other girls. So we don't allow sleepovers because she's already kissing people and yada yada. So I don't know when it would have happened. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my ex-wife I'm not going to help our children learn her native language? I, male 32, am about to be divorced from my wife, female 34, of 7 years. Together, we have three kids with ages ranging from 2 to 5. My wife and I have an interracial marriage, with myself being Italian-American and my wife being the first person in her family who wasn't born in Japan. She was raised speaking Japanese in the home, and that is the language she uses to chat with her siblings. However, she was raised in the US and speaks native English as well, so there is no issue of her understanding of English. While we were originally dating and again when we got married, I asked her if she wanted me to learn Japanese to better fit in with her family. Not only did she tell me that learning Japanese wasn't necessary, but she also has gone no contact with half her Japanese-speaking family over the years, so I didn't try to learn Japanese for years. Once we had kids, her tune changed, and it became important to her to continue her culture by teaching the kids Japanese. I bought the Genki books, I tried Primsler, and I'm proud now to say I speak Japanese at a level of a two-year-old Japanese child. I even taught our kids their first Japanese word, which roughly translates to up or uppy. But I always feel behind, relative to where I would like to be, and the kids struggle to integrate into Japanese social situations. For a while, we were talking about doing some drastic changes to help the kids learn Japanese, such as moving to a city with more Japanese people, sending her away to Japan with the kids every summer, getting a new pair from Japan, etc. Separately, my wife gave me an ultimatum for an open marriage, and I simply couldn't feel comfortable with that, so a divorce seems like my only option. In a divorce, my main goals are A, to make sure my kids don't get a bad situation, B, to make sure that I am addressing my own needs. This came to a head recently when my soon-to-be ex-wife came to me and asked about when we wanted to start moving to the city with more Japanese people. I said that I wasn't sure that was going to happen and she got upset, saying I had already agreed to move. I told her that I had agreed to move with my wife and that I didn't want to move several hours away from my ex-wife. She then said that it was for the kids so they could learn Japanese. I said I wasn't raised speaking Italian and I only cared about the kids learning Japanese because I love her and wanted to support my wife. But if we are getting divorced, I need to suppress those feelings of love and ask myself what I want. And the answer is, I don't care if my kids can speak language I can't speak. But a part of me is concerned that my kids will wish we did more to teach them Japanese when they are older. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. She agreed to monogamy and changed her mind. You agreed to move to a city based on the assumption you would be moving as a family. She changed the arrangement, not you. She wants to move there to be with other Japanese people. It has nothing to do with making a better life for your children. Your children will not be harmed by not moving. Your ex-wife can teach her kids about her culture as she wishes. She can move if she wants to, but she cannot force you to move. If she tries to leave with the kids, try for full custody. If she is upset about splitting the family in between cities, remind her that the family is fractured because of her. Your ex-wife is acting in her own interest, 
and is trying to guilt you into harming your life so that she can feel better. If she wants to be selfish, she should be ready to accept the harm she does while doing so. Does she think that your children will benefit more from being better at a second language or from having a familial support system? She's acting out of self-interest. Listen, try to keep physical custody of their passports and speak to a lawyer to make sure, if possible, that she isn't going to take them on any trips to Japan. If she decides to move back there, this country doesn't care about you as custody agreements. She'll get custody and you'll never see them again. It seems unlikely that she would move back there when she's never lived there in the first place. I don't understand how the children can't learn Japanese from their mother. Young kids learn the language their parents speak to them, so why don't your ex-wife talk Japanese to them at home when she has the kids, and you can talk English with them when you have them? They can later have extra Japanese classes to support their learning, but the language should start at home. That said, none of this is your problem anymore. Your responsibility is to take care of your kids by getting a fair custodial agreement and a divorce and then sticking to your part in it. Your ex is responsible for a share, and teaching Japanese she's insisting on.